With the endlessly drawn-out discussion on the restitution of African art, it is clear that the much-needed changes will not come through court proceedings or presidential mandate, but by conscious, domestic action aimed to be more inclusive and accessible to all members of society for participation, especially the younger generation. However, in an effort to travel far in this fight, the African Art Artists Foundation Festival Remediation hopes to achieve this by mitigating further damage this historical and cultural disconnect has caused. Well, joining us for a discussion on this is Ken Wadiobu, whose artwork constantly challenges modes of black representation. Many thanks for joining us. Hello. Great Thank to you. Have you. Thank you. I mean, a good place to start with would be your focal point on art, which talks about uh, black lives, uh, uh, the black continent, yeah. Africa. With all that is happening around the world at a moment like this, um, are we normalizing enough the conversation about racial justice through art? Uh, what role is art playing? It, and is it playing that role well? Well, for me, I always believe that art, is, art was created to question or answer questions, right? So it, it starts a conversation. A conversation starts when you see an art piece. The conversation of why is it so? You know, why did the artist decide to bring this on a canvas? And, you know, that conversation is what art has been doing for years. And it's what the black community, both here in Africa and in diaspora, have been trying to stir up the conversation of blackness, right? And that conversation is being, you know, used in a lot of black art, right? And that, you know, that feeling, that, um, that, converse, that, you know, activity that comes from that conversation helps to build even the black race. So yeah, a lot of artists have been tuning in into that conversation, that way of changing the idea or the, or the perception or that stereotype that they've given to every black person in the world. So yeah, it's actually making a, deep, a great effort, especially here in Nigeria, where young artists have decided to tune into that conversation, have that conversation of who they are, what they, why they are, you know, who they are, why, why are they black, why, why are they in Africa, and why, why is it that you know, they, they seem to have less, or those, they seem to be you know, disconnected from the rest of the world. You know, this kind of conversation is the kind of conversation we build here. All right, uh, Ken, I'll straight out ask you, yeah. uh, when you say remediation, what does it really uh, connote? Add that to this, if we hope to travel far in this fight, yeah. we must travel together. Yes. Would you care to expatiate uh, on, on this as regards the endlessly drawn out discussion on restitution of African art? Okay, yeah, so... Um, we thank God, three years ago, the F um, French President Macron decided to uh, make this conversation of the restitution of African artifacts even more global, right? And I, I always believe that if the court does not, if law does not work, right, the people work, right? And we've seen that happen so many times, especially in social media. And I feel the more people tune into a conversation together, right, we force things to happen, we force things to be, we force ourselves to be heard, right? And that's what we've been doing for a long time, you know, looking at um, even the Black Lives Matter, right? It's what, what kept her from a hashtag, then it became as huge as what it is today. So I feel, you know, the more we tune into the conversation, the more, you know, young people are aware of these kind of things, the more uh, people understand that, you see, it, it, it's all about, you know, that, you know, that historic value, that, who, that idea of uh, who are we, who, you know, where did we come from, you know, what represents us, you know, this kind of conversation is the kind of conversation that I feel we would have that conversation together, and, you know, we project ourselves as who we are, right, and who we think we are, then people will start to listen. Actually, when you bring it down to the restoration of African artifacts, right, the more people who are in tune with that conversation, the better. It's like the story of uh, uh, the prodigal son, right, but this this, in this case, the, the son did not run away. The son was taken away, right? Imagine how happy we would all be when the son actually comes back, right? You can't, you can't take, there's always a bit of, um, there's, there's, a, there's a historic 
connection between an artifact and who we are. And once you, dis once you put a line into that connection, there's going to be issues and ripple effects that it has to our art world. So when we come together and make that stand and make that conversation even more valid, then people will start to listen. So yeah, I believe that you know, having a collective conversation can actually make a change and can stir up something. Mm. Indeed. Uh, for many people, this is reclaiming dignity. This is yes. filling that historical gap or puzzle you know, that was taken from them. And you're very correct that President Macron uh, made perhaps his intention known uh, clearly in 2017 when, his, when he addressed those students in Ouagadougou. Uh, a committee has been set up after then, the Sars Savoy Committee, but nothing much has been implemented after then. Yeah. Why do you think it's so tedious to return this at work to Africa? If... <laughs> You see, this question, I, I, I went online and I actually Googled why mm -hmm. can't our artworks be returned back? And you, you'd have a lot of funny responses. A lot of people will tell you that it's no more our art piece, right? It's, it's no more ours, right? Because it has been taken away, right? Some people will say um, because it's one of the biggest financial generation when it comes to um, museums, right? But I, for me, I think it's... I think it's a bit of greed and not understanding that the world, you know, is transforming into this justice leading world where, you know, people now can, you know, things that we are, you know, the things of our past will not if eventually have a drastic negative effect on our future. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to recorrect all those mistakes. We're trying to recorrect all those issues, all those um, inhuman things that were done in the past. And restituting African artifact is one of these inhuman things, right? For years, we, for, as my, for me as an artist, I never understood if we even had sculptures or if we have artifact when I was young, right? And these are the kind of conversations, these are the kind of things that a young child should go and see. You should go and see what your ancestors have done, what, you know, the kind of technique, the kind of poise, the value, the beauty of the kind of things that our forefathers did so that it can even inspire us and influence us in the you know, new things to come. The same way Afrobeats has influenced the new generation of musicians, right? Things should influence artists. Now, it's so alarming when an artist has to travel away from his own country to see his own artifact and be inspired and influenced by it, right? And that's, 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 that's the kind of thing we're trying to do. We're trying to connect people, we're trying to connect ourselves back to our artifact, we're trying to connect ourselves back to our history. And, oh, yeah. all, all right, Ken, walk us through Ken Awadiobu's, uh, who is uh, questioning the objectification of culture, Leko Abato, who has personalized these ancestral objects to speak on the appropriation and westernization they have suffered in foreign lands and the rest who are making one statement or the other through their works. It, 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 started, it started from understanding that art is supposed to be used as a tool to create change. It's, it's beautiful. It's, 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 to, it's to glamour the eyes, it's to have this sort of, you know, interest. Wow, it's amazing. But at the same time, it's supposed to stir up conversations. What kind of conversation do you want to stir up? Do you want to just stir up conversations about whether there's no food on the table? Or you want to stir up global conversations about you know, your identity, who you are? Who are you? Why do you exist? Why are we Africans? Why are we black? Right? There are certain things that should become part of us, that when you represent yourself as a black person, that you start you know, pinpointing and connecting all these things. And one of these things you connect is the art of our ancestors, the art of the past, right? And if there is a break in that connection, right, then there is a question mark on, you know, why, why, why are these things even, why did they, why did they happen to us? What, what exactly, what exactly are we? What, why, what kind of art did we start doing? Right? And I feel, you know, connecting ourselves to this conversation and actually bringing back these things that are part of us, that become that we are supposed to be part of us, right? That are no, are no more part of us because some people took it away because they felt it was right to, 
right? Connecting ourselves back to this artifact, back to this conversation, back to this history, right? I think is the best form of, you know, this artistic discourse that we're trying to do. So I, you know, Lekon Abaton, Ima Odumade, Margaret Atoikine, Maureen Uzo, um, Washi Eshinlokwa, and many others have decided to connect in our art into that conversation of give us back our sculptures, give us back our art, let us know where we came from, let us know how we have come to this point, how we got these ideas, how our... Lekon let, let one time came to me and asked me, he asked me like, why, why are they still with our sculptures? Why, why do they still have it? Because we, we didn't understand it. Why, why, are, why do we have to travel all the way over there to see our sculptures? They've never seen our sculptures before. They've never seen our artifacts before. 90% of African artifacts are not even in Africa. So it's, 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 it's sad. And that's why this uh, art becomes that conversation, um, that you know, paper, that letter we're trying to send to everybody to say, yo, be aware of what's happening. Be aware that we're losing our culture, we're losing our identity, we're losing our, what really represents us. They are calling it evil, right? But it's being explored in different places. They are, it's being, you know, it's being westernized, it's being, you know, you. As I listen to you, Ken, yeah. I, I'm thinking this, uh, well, maybe I should use the word uphill task, mm. you know. What challenges do you envisage? What challenges are you experiencing? Who are you, aside yourselves, who are the young ones, are you involved in the government or any other organization to help you out? Yes, that's, that's, that's where African Artists Foundation comes up, right? They, they are sort of like the body, the environment where, you know, they push into this conversation. They, they have exhibitions, they organize exhibitions for this kind of conversations. They, call different bodies to actually experience these things and then eventually, you know, push that, um, make that force, start up that force, start up the conversation, even make it stronger. I, mean, I know the conversation has already started before, but sort of revitalize it, make it stronger, make it bolder. And, you know, hopefully there is, there's nothing that cannot be done. You know, our artifacts will probably come back. You know, they, 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 there was a news where I heard they, they, um, they brought one back. But I think that, that was very few. And yeah, I that, think but that's, it, but that's that about Bini or something. Yes, but that's a success. You know, that's a success story. Mm. The more we keep making these conversations, the more we keep agitating them, the more we keep telling them, it's our art, it's not yours, right? The more we keep, and especially when the young voices tune into that conversation, then they know that it's quite serious and people will start paying attention to it. Well, the prospects of restitution definitely angers European art dealers, collectors, and curators. So we have to keep pushing. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you so much. Ken, what do you an artist there?